You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. Folks, uh, remember, we have got a strike going on right here in Alabama. It doesn't happen often. And in fact, this is the largest coal mine, uh, coal miner strike since 93, I believe it was, when, when we had a, uh, the, the last time we had a significant strike in the, in the coal mines in Alabama. Uh, there are 1,100 workers, 1,100 coal miners at Warrior Met Coal in Brookwood, Alabama, right outside of Tuscaloosa. Uh, they decided about a week ago to reject a tentative agreement offered by the company and to continue striking until more of their demands are met, right? So let's, you know, we talked about it a little bit last week, but let's back up a bit and, and uh, you know, I want to give you kind of the 30,000 foot view of, of what these coal miners have been going through and, and, and why they're striking. Back in 2015, Walter Energies, that's who owned this coal mine. They went bankrupt back in 2015. Walter Energies did, who owned the coal mine. A new company bought them out, and as part of the bankruptcy process, as part of the buyout, they forced the miners to take substantial compensation cuts. They took cuts uh, to, I mean, they took cuts all across the board. It was insane. And this was said uh, that, you know, they said that these cuts were important in order to make the company profitable. Profitable. So among these cuts are a seven dollar an hour pay cut. I mean that that in and of itself, seven dollars an hour is huge. And we're not talking about we're not talking about uh, you know th- these aren't folks that are making a hundred, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety dollars an hour. Okay, they're now making like twenty. The, uh, the, I talked to I talked to some coal miners. Uh, man, I guess it was almost two weeks ago. Now they've been on strike for a bit. Talked to some coal miners the weekend after the strike started, and uh, w- one of the fellows that has been in the mines for 22 years, he's now making $28 an hour. Been in the mines for 22 years, going down every day, six, seven days a week for 10, 12 hour shifts, not getting, uh, sometimes not even getting a paid lunch break, 2,000 feet below the surface of the earth, and now he's only making $28 an hour. That's insane. That is insane. So, a $7 an hour pay cut, cuts to their health care, cuts to their retirement, cuts to their paid lunch break. You know, remember, like when they go down 2,000 feet below the surface of the earth, they can't come up for lunch and they don't have like, you know, one of the things that they said is like, we've not, we don't have like McDonald's and stuff down there, you know, like we've got to eat down in the mines. And uh, before the bankruptcy happened, they would get a 30 minute, which is not a lot, but they would get a 30 minute paid lunch break. And that makes sense because, you know, you're still, you're still down there. Now, half the time they don't even get a paid lunch break. Uh, they have now they have to have mandatory uh, uh, seven day work weeks uh, like they don't get a choice in it before they had before the bankruptcy. They had six day work weeks and they could choose. OK, do I want to work on a holiday? Do I want to work seven days a week if we're wanting to try to meet some production goals? Now they don't get to choose. It's completely at the discretion of management under this new contract. It, it, it's it's it, it's ridiculous. They are the worst compensated group of coal miners in the state. Okay, and and that was because of the concessions that they made to make Warrior Met to make this coal mining operation profitable. They sacrificed for the company, and it worked. It worked. Warrior Met has now pulled record amounts of coal from these mines for two out of the last five years. These mines have been operable for 40 or 50 years, and for two of the last five years, they have had record production. They have had record profits. The price of steel has gone pr- through the roof. And what some of these what some of these miners have told me, which I didn't realize, is that um, the the uh, uh, The reason, you know, a lot of folks know that the price of wood and lumber has gone up. The reason for that is because the price of steel has gone up. And so, where a lot of commercial construction previously would have used steel, they have begun to use uh, lumber instead because lumber is still cheaper than steel. And so, now that's affecting, you know, building homes because that's not like commercial construction. And so, anyway, and this coal is metallurgical coal. It's not like, it's not like, used for energy it's it's a component of steel creation and this is like some of the best uh, metallurgical coal like the the most pure uh, that, that that you've got like on the world uh, these these coal miners said 
So, uh, two out, two out of the last five years have been the mo- the record breaking production out of the fifty year history of this mine. I mean, that's that's like they have done their part, and the executives are making millions of dollars. There are multiple executives at Warrior Met who are making millions of dollars, and they have made they have gotten ten, fifteen, twenty percent pay increases. 20 uh, uh, 20% compensation increases. Uh, Jacob, you may be about to say this, but you mentioned the bonuses. Yeah. That they are receiving, which is more than a lot of people make in an entire year. Yeah, well the bonuses that they're receiving is not even just the uh, uh not even just the executives. Some of the like floor supervisors are getting uh uh 20, 30, 40,000 dollar annual bonuses for uh effectively cracking the whip on these coal miners. I mean it, it it's ridiculous. It it is it it's absurd. I really recommend going and listening, partly because um, this podcast that I'm about to plug, it's mostly not me. It's you know, and and you know, you're listening to me now. If you want to hear actually what the coal miners themselves are saying, uh, go find the Working People's Podcast on Spotify or wherever you find it. And I've got conversations with like half a dozen of these coal miners and and what they're going through. It's it's really really good and touching conversation. And so you know, the the question then arises, like, okay, well, what are their demands? Their demands are parity with other coal miners in the state. It's not anything crazy, and and that's that's one of the things that really came out in these conversations is that like they almost seemed like almost seemed conciliatory that they were on strike. You know, they they kept they kept telling me like, look, we're not asking for anything crazy. We're not asking for anything crazy. We're just asking for what other coal miners in the state are making. And sh- like they they just wanted to make sure that like I knew and the audience knew that they didn't think they deserved like some extravagant compensation package, which, you know, like if anybody deserves outrageous compensation packages, it's coal miners, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, these guys were very proud, and I got the mm-hmm. vibe that they just really didn't want to go to strike. They, right. they were hoping it didn't come to that. Yeah. Uh, but the company wanting to cut even more, not even to just keep the crap that they've already imposed on them the last right. few years, but to actually make it worse after record profits is just such an insult. Yeah, I mean, it, like, I can't. I can't imagine the like just the, the wickedness to come as a multi-million dollar a year earning executive coming to the table across from the bargaining committee of coal miners who who came up out of the ground to bargain across the table from you. Like I can't imagine the audacity to sit there and tell them, "I want you to take less than you you're making now." Like that it's in, it's in, it's insane. But you know, Adam, you're exactly right that they're proud. And and you know, the, the uh, another thing that really came out in these conversations is is exactly how proud they are of the work that they do, of how um, you know, uh, of how uh, uh, like how much they value hard work. You know, these aren't these aren't people that are like they're not you know, they stress this. They're like I'm not looking for a handout. I'm not looking for uh somebody else to take care of me. I'm looking, you know, like I I believe in the value of hard work. I believe in self-sufficiency. I believe uh you know that if you can, you ought to support yourself and that's what they're doing. But the and that's something that a lot of folks in non-union settings, that's something that they really value and they see that as a disconnect with the labor movement they they believe that that union folks don't have these values and if you listen to these conversations like you it really disabuses you of that notion that that union folks don't believe in the value of hard work that right they, the, you uh, know the stereotype of like the quote unquote lazy union right, worker right. and these guys are you know just the polar opposite busting their right. tail 7 days a week yeah and and you know the disconnect comes when like everybody else they say i believe in the value of hard work and so therefore I'm going to take my licks. I'm going to do I'm going to do whatever the company says. I'm going to lick their boots if they ask me to. You know, that's what that that's where those values lead a lot of folks. That's where the company, that's where the boss wants those values to lead you. But for these workers, they say, "I'm going to do my part, but I'm also worth something. And I'm going to demand that I be paid fairly. I'm going to stand up for my rights and I'm going to stand up for my worth and that's something that i wish more people would take to heart 
You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. Jacob Morrison. I am here with new co-host Adam Keller, old co-host David Story, and we are talking about we are talking about uh, the coal miners' strike at Warrior Met Coal uh, down in Brookwood, Alabama. The United Mine Workers of America, who represent the coal miners down there, they have uh, they have gone on strike. Eleven hundred of them have walked off the job, and uh, and so we've been talking about. The conditions that they faced. We've been talking about the uh, the 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 pay and the compensation, the the sacrifices that they made for the company because the company went bankrupt in 2015, and the sacrifices that they made to make it profitable that were successful. And then the company has the audacity to come and say. I want you to take more sacrifices. I want you to take another seven dollar an hour pay cut. I mean, that's that is how bad faith the bargaining was. And so, uh, so when the uh, uh, you know when they went into negotiations with the company, the coal miners union's bargaining committee, the, you know they're granted the authority by the membership to call a strike. And so after that obstinate um, and bad faith bargaining by the union, they did. They called an unfair labor practices strike because of the bad faith bargaining. And so, uh, so the bargaining committee voted to strike. They did. And less than a week later, the company came back with another offer and said, "Okay, look, we're not going to ask you to take more cuts. We're going to give you." <coughs> We're gonna give you a little bit more. We're gonna give you like a dollar an hour more or something. And 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 I, I mean, it was really, it was still really insulting. It was not parity with other coal mines. Uh, it was not anything like that. Um, it certainly wasn't a million dollar raise like the CEO has gotten since 2015. And so, uh, uh, so that agreement was voted down by the membership. As and, and and the membership decided we're going to stay out on strike. We deserve more. We want to get parity with the rest of the coal miners in Alabama, and so that's what they did. Um, some other things have happened over the course of this strike at Warrior Met Coal, and and uh, one of the the big update is that Warrior Met filed an injunction against the union. Um, and so, why did they do that? Uh, there were a couple instances of striking miners not moving for buses of scabs. Uh, they turned around a couple buses of scabs at the picket line at the entrances, which is cool as hell. That is awesome. Uh, but that only happened a few times, and you know, of course, that's that's technically illegal. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Shout out to those miners. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, solidarity. That's that's cool as hell, man. So, but but that only happened like a couple of times, right? This was not a wide spread phenomenon the rest of the complaint was like was like talking about managers and scabs feeling sad because their feelings got hurt because uh, the striking miners called them mean names as they crossed the picket line that's what the rest of the complaint consisted of it was just just a bunch of whining and moaning and I mean just this PC cancel culture nonsense from the scabs and from the managers Managers who were sad about words. It was just the most. It, it was just. It was pathetic. It was really pathetic. And the response of the court was to grant a temporary restraining order. It was granted until April fifteenth, uh, and then it got extended until April twenty eighth. So they're still under a temporary restraining order. And some of the things that it did was it just reiterated the law, like okay, you know, guys, you like you can't turn around scabs, uh, you know that that's not you can't do that, and you know, like okay, whatever, fine, that's fine, that's not a big deal. Uh, okay, I can deal with that. The thing that I can't deal with is this temporary restraining order limited the number of picketing uh, of picketers at each entrance to 6 6 people this is like i mean the state the government big 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 brother the big government has come down and told these working alabamians only 6 of you can protest at one time how insane is that that a judge gets to make that decision that's absurd. We've got we're supposed to have freedom of speech in this country, 
Right? I mean, I thought, like, I thought we had freedom of speech. I thought the First Amendment. I thought we had a constitution. They are literally assembling with their, I mean, right. using their freedom of assembly at the picket line. Yeah. And, and you know, so that, like, that brings, like, that brings me to, like, wh- where I wanted to wrap this up is, uh... Where the hell is the Republican politicians? Where the hell are the conservative media folks? Like, aren't coal miners the quintessential kind of Republican ideal of a working man? Like, I mean, they get their hands dirty. They work in resource extraction. So, you know, you can stick it to the libs by advocating for their rights or whatever. And that's something that Trump did, ostensibly. He, you know, we, remember, there was a big, I mean, you heard about it for weeks on this station back in 2016 when Hillary Clinton, uh, which, you know, whatever, rightfully so, when Hillary Clinton said something about putting, putting coal miners out of work work the that quote was taken a bit out of context but look it was tone deaf it was bad right and you heard about it for weeks i mean no doubt you probably still hear about it sometimes and and so you know where are where are the folks where are the folks that are uh, uh, that, that were so outraged about Hillary Clinton saying that about coal miners? Where are they? They're, I mean, they're not anywhere to be found. Right. And where's the outrage about an activist judge yeah. telling telling people how many of you can actually assemble in a space? Yeah. Uh, but I want to make sure everybody knows what a scab is. If you're not familiar, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, right, you right. know, the scabs are, are who the company brings in when the union is on strike. Uh, these are people who are non-union people who are uh, willing to uh, walk past hmm. uh, their fellow workers and go in and work, uh, oftentimes for you know temporary contracts, and and that's a classic union busting technique. When folks go out on strike, uh, they look for usually people who are desperate, uh, yeah. people who are so desperate that they are willing to be a scab. Right. Uh, you know that, which doesn't necessarily justify it on their their part, but uh, that's a classic technique, and and I'm not surprised that you know Warrior Med is doing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a good clarification. Thank you for that, Adam. Uh, uh, sometimes we get caught up in our own lingo, lingo, but yeah, and and you know not only that, but like the free speech side of this, right? Like I had been led to be, you know, uh, I had been led to believe that like conservative folks really cared about, um, you know, woke PC mobs telling people what they can and can't say and when and where they can say that. But here we've got a judge. We've got an activist judge, big government, violating the Constitution, coming in and telling minors that no more than six of them, telling them when and where they can say what they can say. Like, I thought I had been led to believe that free speech was a big issue on the right now. I thought they hate it when people get canceled. But coal miners right here in Alabama are being canceled by the state. And you haven't heard a peep about it. Oh, but God forbid that a conservative multimillionaire not have his book listed on Amazon.com. Right? All of y'all know what I'm talking about because that story was talked about for weeks. But you are not hearing about working Alabamian coal miners being supp- their speech being suppressed by the state Report. My name is Jacob Morrison here with my co host Adam Keller and David Story. We are talking about the coal miners' strike in Alabama. And, um, and, 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 you know, we left off talking about how. Like, where are the uh, the Republican advocates for working people? Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley have have told me that the Republican Party is now the party of the working class. Um, everybody in the conservative media space has told me that the Republican Party, that conservatives, uh, that, that these type of folks are the only defenders of freedom of speech, right? But here we've got coal miners who are not being compensated fairly. Who are who have walked off the job because of it? Who are being who are having their uh, their speech suppressed by the state? And you haven't heard a peep. If you haven't heard me call in to Dale Jackson's show on Thursdays, you haven't heard this covered not a single time. 
on this station. I've been listening. I've been listening to every show for the since this uh, uh, since the strike started. It has not been talked about once when I've not been on the air. Not once. That's absurd, right? That's absurd. And uh, and seriously, I said this on the other on the other half on the other side of the break. But God forbid a conservative multimillionaire not have his book listed on Amazon.com. That's the kind of stories that you hear about when when people want to advocate for free speech. But that's not even relevant to the First Amendment because that's not the government. Here we've got a cut and dry case of the government telling people when and where and how and what they can say and you're not hearing no defense of these working folks these alabama coal miners they're being hung out to dry by donald trump by the republican party by the conservative media space like they don't care and that's the rub that's the like that's what i want to get across is that the conservative politicians these media folks their support for working folk is all performative culture war BS. Because now that coal miners in Alabama could use real support in a real material way, it's crickets. Not hearing nothing. And I told Dale this on Thursday, and his response, like, it was so silly. He said, well, I haven't heard much about it in the liberal mainstream media either. I haven't heard it covered on AL.com, which is one, is not true, right? AL.com has, they have multiple articles about it. There are multiple articles about it in the Tuscaloosa paper, um, in other uh, other local uh, you know news stations, they're they're all covering it. I mean, it's not like the top story, but it's all being covered. It's uh, it's being covered at least a couple of times a week, which is more than you can say uh, for this radio station. And and it's silly because uh, like does the liberal media have to cover an issue before conservative media jumps in and 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 says their piece on it? Like you don't have to wait for anybody to say anything. You know, like the, these are issues in your state that you theoretically have the power to influence the 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 popular narrative about this on the side. You could help these coal miners, and it's crickets. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's absolutely an indictment on the conservative media space that you hear more about Dr. Seuss than about striking coal miners. Because one of those issues, it just doesn't matter, right? Like, I just don't care that Dr. Seuss books with racist caricatures, whether they are or are not being published anymore, okay? I don't care. Like, I don't, I couldn't, I could not care less. Uh, The other one, has real freedom of speech implications. It has real implications for the ability of working Alabamians to support themselves today and in the future and for their families. I mean, this, this this is real. Like, these are people's lives. And I hope some of y'all out there, I hope that some of the more conservative coal miners on strike right now, which of which there are some, I ran into folks, had great conversations. I love them. I, they're my brothers and sisters. They had MAGA hats on, okay? I mean, they did. They're conservative. They, some of them are conservative folks. And I hope that this strike... I hope it kind of plants a seed and gets gets y'all and gets them thinking about like uh, conservative Republican politicians, the conservative media space. Who are they actually fighting for? Who are they actually beholden to? Do they really care about working folks like you and me and those coal miners down in Brookwood? Like, I hope you just like maybe there's a couple of gears turning. Right. I mean, uh- I hope that it, it starts to show that they just care about you as an idea. Yeah. Right. They like right. the they like the image of a coal miner uh, that they can put in a thirty second political ad. You know, all dirty, wearing a hard hat, uh, and and voting Republican. But when it comes down to real life, uh, these workers against management, a hundred percent of the time they're lining up with management. Right. And you see that not just with their media, but also with their judicial system. Right. Uh, and that's, you know, that goes to a bigger issue here in the state of Alabama is that the judges are so in the side of the bosses mm-hmm. that whether it's, you know, a uh, an injunction with a strike or, you know, individual claims you may have as a worker, um, as an attorney once told me, ultimately the law is what the last judge said it was. Right. Right. So the, if the judge is predisposed to take the side of management you know the merits of your case matter a lot less yeah 
Yeah, and I mean, this is, you know, this is a Republican judge. He was appointed in 2011. I looked him up. He was appointed in 2011 by Robert Bentley. He was reelected as a Republican in 2012. And, you know, I mean, this is, this is, uh, you know, this is a Republican judge. This is what the Republican Party stands for. Okay? You know, I'm the, are the Democrats uh, the party of the working class? No. But are unions a good vehicle for working people to make their lives better? Yes. And do the do the Democrats are are they as are they like do they live and die by the destruction of the organizations of working people? Generally not. Not as much as Republicans. So, you know, that's something to consider. It's well, something to well consider. one thing I wanted to go back to is just the fact that these miners actually had the opportunity to vote down a right. tentative agreement. Right. If you're not in a union, if you're just by yourself and management decides, well, sorry, guys, we're right. we're, we're going to offer more cuts. Mm-hmm. You don't really have much of a choice. Right. You right. you take it or you leave. Yeah. Uh, you know, you take it or you risk being uh, unemployed and have starvation. Yeah. Right. I mean, you have the threat of starvation and destitution mm-hmm. over your head, whereas these guys do have each other. Right. And that is that's the union difference. Yeah, they've got each other, and 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 they are on strike, and they are foregoing their paychecks and they're foregoing their their health benefits that they get from the company. But the union is looking out for them. The union has paid out now six. They issued the first payment of six hundred thousand dollars in strike pay for these workers, and the union has health insurance set up for them. And that's I mean that's exactly right. That's the union difference, there. right? And you you want to know where your dues money goes? Yeah, right. uh, because <laughs> folks love to talk about dues money and how mm-hmm. dues money is spent. Uh, and don't get me wrong, there are legitimate you know, questions and, and conversations to have around that. But right. this is why you pay dues, because you need it, right? Yeah. And, and, and this is, uh, you know, so it's great that these guys have that fund to support them, because mm-hmm. they have to stay out right now. Right. Um, and, and, you know, more power to them. We hope that they can get a great agreement, yeah. uh, however long it takes. Yeah. And hopefully those scabs see the error of their ways and stop undercutting their fellow workers. Well, um, and, and something that you know. David mentioned is, you know, oftentimes these scabs are brought in from out of town, out of right. state. They don't know right? what they're so they're going to, you know, they may not know the territory or the community. And whatever money, whatever little money they get, it's not being spent in that community. Right. You know, so uh, I'm sure the judge is, is leaning on, uh, you know, siding with the company because of their role in the economy. Uh, but these scabs are not going to be supporting the economy there in Brookwood. No. Uh, so remember, folks, the North Alabama DSA has a necessities drive this Saturday from 3 to 5 p.m. at the IBEW Local 558 Union Hall on Clinton Avenue, right across from Yellowhammer and Campus 805. Uh, bring by your non-perishable food items, PPE, clothes, blankets, all that good stuff, and your donations will be forwarded to the Manor House. Uh, if you want to see what we're up to throughout the week, get our snide questions quips about the news of the day, then you should follow us on social media. We're on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Valley Labor Report. We're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore A-L. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist. That's spelled R-A-D-I-C-L Unionist. Adam is not on Twitter. Uh... But we should get him one of those accounts so that uh, so that we can have his hot takes. We're going to have to get that fixed. Uh, if you miss part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, you can search YouTube for The Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. We also upload the program on more than 11 different podcasting apps. So to see if we are on your listening platform of choice, go to thevalleylaborreport.transistor.fm slash subscribe. We've got a website where you can buy our fantastic union-made hats, union-made stickers, and union-made bumper stickers, uh, thevalleylaborreport.org. We've still got a lot. We've got like 50 hats left, so make sure you go by and get one of those. They're $35. That includes shipping. It's really good. It's really nice. Me and Adam are both rocking ours. Uh, You should check it out, thevalleylaborreport.org. And finally, if you appreciate our work and want to help us stay on the air, consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com/slash the valley labor report.